Get in here, get in here, get in here, baby, because I'm gonna teach you how to date a boss. So I'm gonna teach you seven tips that you absolutely must know if you not only want to get a boss, but also keep a boss. I'm gonna tell you this right now, bosses are not a dime a dozen. For every boss out there, there's at least 20 people out there who wants that boss, okay? So if you want to get a boss and keep a boss, you need to listen to this video. Take good notes, baby. And if you are a boss, go ahead and share this video, okay? Because, baby, this is gonna be boot camp for your date so they can know how to treat you the right Right way. Let's start with tip number one. I got my glasses so I can see it, honey. I got them on my, I got them on my thing, honey. I'm a boss, but I ain't getting no younger. Listen to me, I'm saying this, okay? So listen, tip number one, don't let that boss pay for everything. Hear me when I say this, baby, because I'm teaching you game, baby. I'm, I'm teaching you something that's going to help you, okay? First of all, you don't want to let them pay for everything because you don't want to come across like a gold digger, okay? What you got to understand is this, is that in order to be a boss, you probably got to be pretty intelligent. We didn't make all this money being stupid, okay? We know how to read people. We know how to read situations. Even when we smile and you think that we just in our most relaxed state, we're still reading you and analyzing the fuck out of you, okay? So when you come to the table and every single time the bill comes, every single time we go out, you're not reaching for your pocketbook, you're not reaching for your wallet, you're not trying to spend no money, you know what I mean? Then we start to categorize you as, oh, it's a play thing. Oh, it's a gold digger. Oh, this ain't gonna be my long-term mate. Mm -mm, nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna enjoy you, okay? But it sets together a power dynamic in our mind that says, you know what? Nah, this is a situation where, um, yeah, baby. This ain't my equal in terms of mindset. What you have to understand is this. A boss, when they're looking for their long-term partner, when they're looking for their queen, when they're looking for their king, they're looking for someone who, although they may not necessarily be financially equal, they're looking for someone who's a mental equal, all right? And if someone is your mental equal, they're not gonna let you pay for everything. Why? Because someone with even just a little bit of intelligence recognizes that money is power. And when you allow someone to pay for absolutely everything, though it may feel good in the moment that Ooh, I ain't gotta pull out my wallet when I'm around so and so. What it's doing is it's putting together a power dynamic. Listen to me close when I tell you this. It's putting together a power dynamic that establishes that they are in control and that they set the rules and the tone for that relationship. I'm telling you this from my own experience because that's how I think, okay? And many of my friends, I, my friends are all bosses. They are CEOs, they are business owners, they making a lot of money just like me. And I'm telling you how we think. Listen to me when I tell you this. When we are going out with somebody and we paying for everything, when well, we start to think is, you know what? I don't mind having this person around. Okay, that's all right, that's all right. This person gonna be my plaything then, okay? Because here's the thing, if I'm paying for it, cause that's basically what I'm doing is I'm finding us in this at this point in time. I'm not calling you a prostitute if you letting folks do that to you, but I am saying they finding us in it at that point in time. If I'm financing it, then you need to be like Burger King. I need to have it my way. When I say I want it this way, you do it that way, okay? Why? Because I'm financing at this point in time. I don't view you as my equal when I'm financing everything and you don't even attempt to contribute in any way, shape, or form to when we're hanging out together and when we're spending time together. Spending time together costs money, okay? So what ends up happening in that situation is that I will demote you to a certain place within my life where I'm not viewing you as someone who will be in my future. I'm just viewing you as someone Someone who's filling my time in the present. So the key to being with the boss is make sure that you contribute and do not let them pay for everything. I don't care if their monthly income is what you would make within a year. It doesn't matter about how different the money is. You still need to contribute. If y'all go out to dinner and, and they take care of that whole bill, you still offer to pay the tip. If they don't let you pay the tip, offer to pay for valet. When you come over to their house, bring over some food. You call them up. You say, hey, baby, I'm, I'm on my way over there. What you want to eat? You do things to contribute tribute financially because it's not about the money what it is about is establishing a power dynamic that darling although you got more money than me and I love that I'm still going to contribute because what I'm not here to do is have you take care of me tip number two for how to date a boss do not waste our time listen when I tell you this time is money and you don't get to being a boss by wasting your time. If you see my schedule each week for all these businesses that I own and all these things I gotta do, literally from the moment I get out of bed to the moment I go to sleep on some days, I've got something to do. Even my self-care time, if you know what, I'm just gonna rest today. I schedule that in because I have to make sure that I have time for me because my schedule has so much coming at me. So if I decide that I wanna date you, if I decide I wanna spend time with you, then you gotta respect my time because literally it is a no-go, it is a deal breaker when you don't respect my time. Now, what do I mean by respecting my time? What I mean by respecting my time is that if we set a date 
then be there on time, okay? Now, I'm, to me, I'm gonna tell you this right now. I'm not somebody who shows up, if we say it's seven o'clock, I'm not gonna be there right at seven o'clock. Give me a 15 minute window, okay? I give other people the same grace. But, you know, make sure that you do that kind of stuff. If you're gonna be late, let me know that in advance. Why let me that, know that in advance? Because if you tell me, listen, baby, we supposed to meet at seven o'clock, but then something happens earlier and where you're not gonna be able to get there until eight, Tell me that as soon as you know it because literally what that's going to do is I'm going to be relieved because that means that I can continue doing whatever I'm doing. How you know I wasn't doing a report? How you know I wasn't doing something for my business that's making me money? And so when you tell me that we got a little extra time, I'm going to chill out and continue doing what I'm doing because what I don't want to do is get someplace early and then be sitting there waiting for you. That's a very important thing. Listen when I tell you this. Bosses don't like to wait. Don't you ever have a boss waiting for you. You may think that shit is cute. You may think that, ooh, you know, I'm making them wait for me and I'm giving myself a sense of importance. No, you're not, baby. When you play with a boss's time, in their mind, you're playing with their money, okay? And one thing you never want to do is play with our money. So tip number two is make sure that you do not waste our time. Make sure that your every action is communicating to us that you respect our time. Because here's the thing, as a boss, we're going to respect your time too. Again, we we did not get to this point of having financial abundance by not respecting people's times, okay? So we know how to respect people's time. We just need to see that you know how to respect our time. Because if you respect our time, that allows us to know that you're somebody who can really fit within our life. Tip number three, baby. Let me look at my notes, honey. And like I said, if you a boss, baby, share this video, darling, so that other people can see this. And either you ain't a boss, share this video, baby, because this is the boss boot camp, baby. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, okay? Tip number three, baby. Give us space when we making our money. Hear me when I say this, okay? Now let me explain to you my style of dating. I'm not the kind of person where I'm gonna be like, oh, let's go to dinner two or three times a week or let's do all this other stuff. No, 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 no. Maybe first date is dinner, second date is dinner, something like that. But at a certain point in time, my version of a date sometimes may be, hey, Swing on by the house. Let's just spend the evening together. You know, I know you work today. I did what I had to do today. Just come on by the house. Let's just kind of hang out together this evening. Nothing serious. You know, but that evening, I may have a thing or two to do for work. Maybe not the whole night, but you know, I may have to check an email here or there, whatever it may be. If I'm doing that, baby, go ahead. You know, just watch TV. Chill out. Make yourself at home. Go in that refrigerator. Do what you got to do, baby. Give me some space. When I gotta do, when I gotta earn my money, if I gotta pick up my phone when we out and about just to check an email, take a call, don't, don't, don't be getting all uncomfortable like, ugh, you on your phone again, ugh, why, why somebody, ugh, you, you, you don't work again? Yeah, baby, I am, I am because see, as a boss, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me put my boss glasses on, huh? Okay. As a boss, listen to me, I don't have a nine to five, okay? With the nine to five, you got the luxury to go in at nine, leave at five, not think about your work until the next morning at nine when you come back. I ain't got that luxury, okay? With the financial abundance that comes with being a boss, that means that sometimes I may have to check an email at night. Why? Because you gotta think about like this. The boss is the top of the totem pole, okay? So by the time something has made it to my email box, by the time something is making it to my phone, that means that nobody below me can resolve that thing. So now it's been escalated to me, which means that it must be a problem, okay? So I gotta jump in at that point in time. I gotta deal with things at that point in time. There are times where I gotta get stuff done and listen, Listen, I gotta get this done by tomorrow because I ain't got no co-worker that I can say, hey, do this for me. Who, because at the end of the day, I'm the only boss at my level. Everybody else works below me. Some, so, some stuff I just gotta get done. So I'm trying to tell you this so you can understand the mindset of a boss. When they're working and doing what they have to do for the money, chill chill that's not the time to be all up in their face okay that's not the time to be texting them and texting them and texting them. baby when you done when you coming when you done when you coming find something else to do there is nothing more attractive to a boss than somebody who can find a way to occupy themselves while you're doing what you have to do because here's what i'll tell you is this that to me when somebody is up in my face why are you busy why are you working why 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 Literally for me, I start to become less attracted to you because I start to think to myself, why are you not doing something that will make you more productive? Why do you have so much energy to be up in my face about why I'm doing what I got to do? It's not like I won't give you my time because I definitely will give you my time. A boss will always make time for you when you reflect to them that listen, 
I appreciate what you're doing. I understand what you have to do for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I have to do for me. There's nothing sexier than that to be able to come back together after you've been doing some stuff. And you be like, baby, I'm so sorry that I had to step away for a minute to take care of this. And they say, don't even worry about it, honey. I was over here doing so-and-so. I got this together while you were working. I went ahead and made up some food for us. Or I went ahead and did this, that, and the other. We good to go, baby. You feeling good? That's not, there's nothing sexier than that, okay? I'll say what is a complete buzzkill is after you've done what you had to do and you come to them, you finally done? Child, can you get your, can you, can you please get your shit and get out of my house, please? Can you just go? I'm done. I'm done. Because we're not going to be compatible because what I'm not going to do is spend the next couple months or however many years that I'm with you sitting up here feeling bad about doing what I got to do to make my money. When you're a boss, you're going to be booked. When you're a boss, you're going to be busy, okay? And if you don't want me to be broke, then understand there are going to be times where I got to be busy doing what I got to do. So during those times, don't be clingy. Tip number four, have your own life. Let me tell you, this is so critically important because with a boss, we can get very busy at times. And when we're busy, that doesn't mean we won't make time for you, but what it does mean is that there may be times where we don't have as much time for you as we may have had the prior week. Or there may be days where we're hanging out with each other, but my mind may be preoccupied with what's going on with my business. So I may find myself checking my emails and doing what I have to do every now and again. When you have your own life, that allows you to be able to say, you know what, baby? I understand that you're busy. I gotta take care of this stuff over here. Let's just get together tonight, okay? Rather than you sitting up under us, sitting up here pouting all day. When you have your own life, it allows you to be able to have things going on in your own world so that when we do come back together after being busy, we got things to share with each other. I can be like, oh my God, guess what happened to me? And this happened and that happened and the other happened. And I can be like, what happened with you? And be like, oh my God, guess what happened with me too? You know, that's the thing. It is nothing more attractive than being able to come together and feel like, damn, you out here killing it. I'm out here killing it. We both come together and we're killing it. We're doing what we have to do. It, it just, it literally, is intoxicating because what it helps you to feel like is that this person is doing things to build themselves up and enrich themselves which allows them to every day become a better and better partner for you that's what a boss is looking for because I'm always growing I'm always evolving I'm always reaching higher that's just the mindset of a boss so what I know you're doing the same thing it allows me to feel more attracted to you and if you want to be with a boss long term let's say you're trying to marry this person it's very important that you have your own life in some way shape or form because if you don't don't, they will eventually outgrow you. You have to think about this. If I'm out here making all this money, meeting all these people, growing my business, doing whatever it is I have to do, I'm out here hustling, right? That means every day I'm growing because I'm being exposed to new things, new people, new opportunity. So when I come home to you at night and you still talking about the same stuff as yesterday, you're not growing, you're not evolving, everything in your life is always the same. At a certain point in time, I'm going to consciously and subconsciously start to feel like, mm, we don't really have a whole lot in common. I know we enjoyed each other in the beginning, you know, but we don't have a whole lot in common because you're not growing anymore. So if you want to get a boss and most importantly, keep a boss, have your own life. Trust me, this is probably one of the most valuable tips you'll ever hear. The next tip is make us look good. I'm telling you this right now, okay? That means take good care of yourself. Make sure you're always looking your best. Why am I telling you this? Because one of the things you have to recognize about a boss is this, is that who our spouse is and how our spouse presents themselves, how they come across in public. The next tip is make us look good. Good, this is very important, baby. As a boss, trust and believe. I'm gonna always make you look good. When you bring me around your family and your friends, trust and believe, baby. I'm gonna be the best thing that they ever seen. They're gonna forget about every ex you ever had before, okay? Why? Because I look amazing. I'm gonna always look good, okay? I'm gonna smell good. My personal grooming is gonna be impeccable, okay? I'm gonna treat people good because again, I did not get to being a boss by not knowing how to treat people. I am masterful at making people feel good around me, okay? I know how to create an experience when I'm around people that literally makes people want to have me around constantly. I need you to do the same thing for me. Here's the thing that you have to recognize about a boss. It is very important to us to make sure that our personal brand, meaning how we're viewed, how people receive us, it's very important to us to make sure our personal brand is being received in a positive manner by the people who matter to us most. So if I'm with the spouse, right and i'm bringing them out and about with me to places where i may be around business colleagues or friends who i do business with or whatever it may be or just people who i'm close to in general 
You gotta look the part, baby. You can't come in here not looking your best. You can't come in here getting drunk or showing up smelling like weed and stuff like that. You can't, you can't be in here, you know, when you open your mouth saying things that may be ignorant or offensive to other people. You got to be intelligent. You literally have to make sure that the way that you present yourself and the things that come out of your mouth and how you smell, how you walk, how you talk, that all of that makes people like being around you as much as they like being around me. Because if that's the case, then baby, we can kill this thing. We can be a power couple. But if you're somebody where literally every time you open your mouth, I'm like, mm, what's, what's he about to say? Or every time you go get a cocktail, I'm like, Lord, please don't drink too much. Please don't drink too much then what's going to happen is I'm going to stop inviting you around because what you become is a liability to my own reputation and I can't have that. The next tip for dating a boss is be proactive and don't make us plan everything. Here's the thing you got to recognize about a boss is this is in our day-to-day -day life we literally have to make so many decisions. We are constantly in a position where we've got to make decisions about everything. We got to make decisions for our employees. We got to make decisions for our business partners. We have to make decisions in so many parts of our life. So for us, it is so intoxicating. It is so attractive. It's damn near sexy when we can be with somebody where they can take the lead at times in making a decision, especially at times where we may be too busy to do that. Let me, let me explain what I mean by that, okay? Let's say, for example, you dating this boss, you get to know this person, and it's Wednesday, and y'all say, hey, we're gonna go to dinner on Saturday. Okay, great, looking forward to Saturday, baby. Y'all both put it in your calendar, make sure you got that time blocked off, right? Now, Thursday will come by. They don't propose where y'all gonna go. Friday come around. You still ain't heard nothing from them about, okay, where we gonna meet, where we gonna eat. Here's what you don't do in that moment. Do not, under any circumstance, hit them up and say, hey, baby, what do you wanna eat tomorrow? Mm-mm, uh-uh, bad thing, don't do it, okay? I know that in some of your minds, you may be thinking, well, why is it a bad thing? I'm asking them what do they want. Here's why that's a bad thing, because you're putting yet another decision on their plate, and as a boss, literally, decisions means energy that we have to expel, because now we gotta sit and think, well, where would I wanna go? What do I wanna eat? All that kind of stuff. We don't wanna make that decision sometimes. That's why we haven't told you where we wanna go yet, because literally, we've not had the mental bandwidth to make that decision yet. So what you wanna in that moment is you hit them up and you say hey baby um I'm looking forward to Saturday night um I picked out these two restaurants as potential options which one do you think you would like most bam Literally, literally, you will shut the game down when you do that. Because what you're doing is you're communicating to them that, hey baby, I'm not in, because what you're doing that moment is you're communicating to them, hey baby, I wanna be around you, but what I don't wanna do is make you do more work, okay? You're communicating that. What you're communicating to them is that you're proactive. You're saying, you know what, baby? I get that you're busy, I got this. I got this, baby, I got you, okay? Because at the end of the day, that's what a boss wants. We got to take care of everything else in the world around us. We want to know that when we come home, that we got somebody who got our back, okay? Somebody that can take care of things. Someone that can say, hey, baby, I got all this planned out, and here's what it is. This is what it's going to cost. This, blah, 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 blah. Just handle it. Handle it, baby. I trust you, and if I don't like it, trust me, I will speak up and say, you know what, baby? I, you know, those two restaurants sound great, but I actually ate at both of those about a week ago. What if we tried this place? I will come back to you and tell you if I want something different than what you proposed, but feel free. In fact, not even just feel free, I encourage you to take the lead at times in being proactive about planning out how you spend time together. And I'm gonna give you a little bonus tip on this one, okay? With a boss, be proactive about communicating with them. What I mean by that is this, picture this scenario. You call up that boss in the middle of the day. You say, hey baby, just call and say, you know, I enjoyed last night. I hope you're having a wonderful day. You're just kind of checking on them. And they answer the phone, hey, how you doing? Yeah, it's good talking to you. Oh my God, last night was great. Um, actually, baby, let me call you back in a couple hours. I'm just finishing up something here. But I promise you, I'm gonna call you back in a couple hours. All right, y'all get off the phone. Couple hours roll by. It's now what? Three o'clock in the afternoon. Then five o'clock roll around. You're like, well, hold on. I called you at noon. I thought a couple hours called me back by two, three, four, five at the max. We rolled around at seven o'clock. You still ain't called me. Here's what you don't do in that moment. Do not send them some text message saying, hey stranger, I'm waiting on you to call me back. That's passive aggressive, it's aggravating as fuck, and what it communicates to them is that you are insensitive to the utter demands that are on their time. Trust and believe. They are not sitting there saying, let me not call you back, or let me procrastinate or reaching out to you, or, or let me make you wait. They're not thinking about that. What they're doing is they are living their life, they're building their business, they're doing what they have to do to be the boss that you're attracted to. So in that moment, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and send them a quick little text message with a little heart. You put a heart 
heart and say, hey, I hope your day is going well. If you're able to give me a call back, I'll be up until nine or whatever time you're gonna be up until. If not, have a beautiful night and I'll talk to you tomorrow. That's what you do in that moment. What you're doing is you are just sending them a loving, warm reminder, hey baby, I'm over here, indirectly saying, hey, you forgot about me. Indirectly, you are saying that, okay? But you're doing it in a way that doesn't guilt them or try to make them feel bad because they got busy. Now, I will tell you this, if it gets to be a pattern of them not following up with you or taking too much time, then you do need to directly address that. And how I would directly address that is to be direct with them and say, hey baby, I'm really enjoying getting to know you and I know you have a lot on your plate and I love that you're that you're very ambitious and that you're constantly building things and being a boss because that's what I'm attracted to. But I don't really feel like I'm on your radar sometimes because you know, sometimes I'll text you and you may get back to me in five minutes. Sometimes it could take two or three days. And so um, I just wanna you know, just talk with you to see is there any way that we can kind of um, work on that because I just wanna feel like I'm a priority to you. I don't, I don't need you texting me back every five seconds but I do wanna feel like I'm a priority. You put it right out there and then y'all talk through it at that point in time. But what you don't wanna do is be passive aggressive and all that other stuff. Be proactive. When you can be proactive, that helps the boss to know, okay, this person gets me, they get my life, and they are sensitive to the fact that I've got a lot of demands on me. The final tip on how to date a boss is to be a boss. Let me tell you why that's so important. You have to have a boss mindset to keep a boss. Think about all the boss couples out there. Barack and Michelle, Jay-Z and Beyonce. I, the list goes on, it's countless, but people who are really at the top of their game, they generally are going to be more attracted to and have longer term, more healthy relationships with people who hold the same values, with people who've got the same mindset, okay? What I don't need in my life as a boss is somebody who's just gonna be here just kissing on me, touching on me, but they don't have anything to offer to the conversation. When I'm sitting there talking about what's going on with business, what's going on with life, all they can do is sit there and smile and not, but they can't contribute. I want somebody where I'm talking and when I'm going through things, they can be like, you know, baby, have you ever considered this? Or you know what, baby, I was just doing a deal with so-and-so. Let me go through my Rolodex. Yeah, here, I'm gonna connect y'all through text. I want y'all to connect with each other. Y'all can make money together, okay? I want someone who can literally help me to be a bigger boss so that I can help them to be a bigger boss and we're pouring into each other. There is nothing more intoxicating than being in a relationship with your equal because when they are your equal, you literally are able to help Help grow one another and it helps you all to not grow apart eventually the number one reason why couples grow apart is because one person is growing and the other person is staying stagnant so when we are both growing at the same time because we are both bosses within our own right what that does is that sets the stage together for us to have a longer term relationship where we can continue to keep pouring into each other's lives and even when we go through things it allows us to be able to get through things in a much smoother fashion because we recognize that there's a whole lot to lose here. I'm a boss, you're a boss. That don't happen every day. And because we value that, we're not gonna be getting caught up in petty arguments and all the drama that other couples get into because we recognize that we've got something special here. We both have got something to lose here. So we're gonna handle our relationship together in a very special and sensitive manner because when two bosses come together, baby, that's like magic and nobody wants to lose that magic. If you like this video, and I know you did, best friend, because it was fire, what I want you to do is like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you're a boss and you got some tips that you wanna share on how to get a boss and how to keep them as well, what I want you to do is comment below, baby. Let me tell you, we're a community and what we're here to do is help one another live our best lives. Thanks for watching, best friends. Mwah.